welcome to Sunday Politics in Northern Ireland. 100 years on from the Easter Rising, the effects of that rebellion are still being felt in the form of a threat from dissidents. I'll be asking the Justice Minister David Ford for his assessment. And rebellion at Westminster over disability benefits, but now there's confusion over how claimants might be affected. I'll be asking a leading benefits expert to explain. And with their thoughts throughout, I'm joined by Brian Feeney and Felicity Houston. Let's hear what uh, my guests, Brian Feeney and Felicity Houston, make of that. Um, Brian, uh, 1916, let's talk about that first of all. I mean, it's hugely complex, and whether it is right to commemorate or whether it is right um, to mark. Um, what do you make of what David Ford's just said and the distinctions and the issues that he's brought out? I think that's just making it overcomplicated. Um, the reason it's being marked, celebrated, whatever, um, on Easter Sunday and Easter Monday, and I'd be there actually on Easter Easter Monday making a making a speech in the in the forecourts, along with a lot of other people. But the reason it, it's it's the origins of the state, um, and it's a bit pious to produce modern ideas about democracy and freedom and all the rest of it, and export them back a century. I mean, the United States celebrates an armed insurrection against Britain. 1775, 1776, they're quite happy to do that. Their massive bicentennial celebration has cost hundreds of millions of dollars. All over the world, you have states which threw off, threw off empires at the beginning of the 20th century and throughout the 20th century, and they all celebrate getting rid of the empires, whether it's the British Empire, the French Empire, the Austrian Empire. Um, there was actually a lot of support in Ireland for the Bulgarians trying to overthrow uh, the Turks and the Russians uh, at exactly the same time. So when the Attorney General John Larkin says, looking at 1916, you have individuals of huge moral worth, individuals capable of huge self-sacrifice, doing something that was profoundly wrong. Yeah. You disagree with that? Well, quite often the Attorney General is uh, profoundly wrong, but never in doubt. Felicity? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Um, I'd be very curious to see if, if Brian gets a letter in the post tomorrow from the Attorney General's office after that. Um, I think the thing I have found fascinating about the 1916 and all the kerfuffle is that I've learnt a lot. Um, I knew more about the causes of the First World War from school than I did about 1916 and the Rising. I just knew that this had happened in, <laughs> something had happened in Dublin. The British had, as usual, mishandled it, and the outworkings of that was the Irish Free State. So now that you know what you know, would you be comfortable going along as Brian's guest to take part in those celebrations next weekend? Well, I think I would be curious to go along. I think I would end up seeing it as very much at being a foreigner, looking at something that you really don't understand very much of. But you you don't feel threatened by it? I think it's so long ago and there has been such a change in our relationship with the Irish Republic that what is happening this, this time round will be different, I hope, from what happened, say, in, in 1966. Right, well, there you go. You've got, you've, you've got a willing guess. Just very quickly, what about the fact, and this is a serious point, and I touched on it with the Minister, the serious point that there are some people who still yeah. use what happened 100 years ago as a reason for what they see as unfinished business today. That's right. And, uh, and they try to use what happened in 1916 to legitimise their actions today. But they're a tiny minority. They have no support. They can't get anyone elected. And actually, nobody knows what they want. It's not just a case of we want a united Ireland. No one knows what they want. OK, we'll talk to you both again um, very shortly. Thanks both for now. Gareth Gordon reporting. Let's have a final word from Brian and Felicity. Felicity, let's just pick up on what uh, Eileen Everson was talking about there. I mean, whether you uh, agree with her analysis or not, it, it's a bit shambolic in terms of the government's official position on oh, welfare, isn't absolutely it? Absolutely, it's dreadful. It's an it's a episode of the thick of it, complete with the bad language. Omni-shambles. Omni-shambles, and apparently Cameron swore severely down the phone at IDS. So they say, anyway. Um, it's dreadful. It is no way to run a government. Um, I think that it's not about Brexit. Brexit is different. It's not about that. It's, um, Ian Duncan Smith was free to say what he wanted about that. He didn't need to make this stand to go out and, and a campaign for what he believes about Europe. I think it's much more about Osborne and his relationship with other big beasts in the party. Mm. What, what do you make of, of, of where we are? Can you pick any logical path through this at all, Brian? Well, uh, I mean, first of all, there is a relationship between Ian Duncan Smith and George Osborne, which has been terribly bad since 2010. But there's certainly an element of the referendum in it. 
Um, th there's no doubt that Ian Duncan Smith and close associates of his have been saying he's been looking for a, a pretext for resigning for several months because his opposition to uh, being in Europe has been very aggressive. I mean, he described the official government position as a dodgy dossier. But having said that, this and, and furthermore, he has carried out some of the worst reforms in the last six years. You know, the benefits cap, the bedroom tax. He's been attacking people with disabilities for six years. And finally, to decide he's, he's got a conscience is surprising. Right, OK. It's a fascinating situation and we're going to have lots more value out of it, I would have thought, in the weeks ahead. Thanks both very much indeed. Uh, that's just about it from all of us. Busy programme today. We're taking a break for the next couple of weeks. Back to Andrew in London. Bye-bye. Here you are. <laughs>